NAN, one of our favorite applications here at NetBird, has gotten a major update. Specifically, version 2.0 beta is now ready to test and use. While there hasn't been too many changes with the actual UI and how you actually interact with NAN, a bunch of the changes are under the hood, basically being an architectural shift to make it more enterprise ready with a huge focus on overall performance and security. Since we covered NAN just about a month ago on this channel, I figured I'd give you a quick update and talk about some of the breaking changes that you might be facing if you installed it using our previous video. And in our last video, we installed it with Docker. And since we're making another NAN video, I might as well show you another installation method, and that is using NPM and a couple other tools to make that whole installation process and managing NAN that way much more friendly. And first, probably the big change that you are probably actually going to notice right away is the fact that there is now a publish button. Before, when you edited your NAN workflow and clicked save, you're basically doing the equivalent of deploying that right away. With version 2.0, you now have draft and published states of your workflows. So you can edit, debug, and break your draft without having to actually mess with the live production workflow that is running. You must explicitly click publish to actually make those changes to production. Another one is kind of a true human in the loop as with version 1.0. If a parent workflow called for a sub workflow that needed to wait for human approval, for example, on Slack or Telegram, in a lot of cases, the connection might time out and just kill your entire workflow. With version two, the parent workflow actually pauses properly and will wait for that sub workflow to complete. And even if this takes a couple days for somebody to interact with the workflow, once approved, the data flows back to the parent seamlessly. Also, when it comes to tightening up security, previously in version one, when you ran a code node, it would just run the code on the same host machine that NAN is running on. That's why me personally used Docker, but now with this change, I'm a little bit more comfortable running it with NPM on my host server. If for example, you had a Java memory leak or some kind of infinite loop going on, it would actually consume the resources on the host, often causing NAN to crash and killing all other workflows in the process. And there's other security risks associated with this as this exposed internal server environmental variables. This is gonna be fixed with task runners, separate processes dedicated specifically to executing custom code. Code. When a workflow hits a code node, NAN sends the data to the task runner. So if something like your Python script crashes, only that runner will crash. The main NAN server stays alive, simply marking it as an error. And doing things like processing large JSON files no longer block the main event loop. So your webhook listeners will remain responsive even while heavy consumption is taking place in the background. This update will also move Python from the experimental state, giving us a actual native Python node in which we'll support things like pip, allowing you to create actual reliable Python playgrounds in your NAN workflow. And now some really important breaking changes to note. One is databases. If you're using MySQL or MariaDB, they are no longer supported. You must use Postgres or SQL Lite. And if you do need to migrate, there are tools and resources to go ahead and help you do that. If you're running this on Docker, you're going to need to include a new task runner sidecar if you do want that new code isolation. And finally, there has been a lot of changes to the code nodes. So if you are using code nodes, they can no longer access process ENV by default. So you now must explicitly allow list the variables that you want to expose to NAN. And there's really a lot more changes. This was just kind of a brief overview. I do recommend you check out their blog post right here on the new release as well as the breaking changes here in their docs with much more details on the things that I briefly covered here. So if you want to go ahead and test this out today, of course you can use Docker, but real quick, I'm going to install this on a machine in our last video that we set up for image. Might be hard to see, we got this guy right here. It's a little uh, two drive Zima board NAS, really fun to play with. And real quick, we're gonna go ahead and spin up NAN with NPM here. So here is my terminal. I've already logged into the machine here. And then right here, we're first going to want to install Node.js. We're gonna to want to get the latest version for Linux using NVM with NPM. So essentially you just wanna grab all these commands right here and drop them into your terminal on whatever machine that you plan on installing this on. So I grab the script that we need. I'm gonna run this command so I don't need to restart my shell and then grab version 24. So there we go, it's done. And just to kind of triple check here, we can run npm-v to check that version as well as node-v. So node-v, we have the prerequisites that we need. 
So I cleared out my terminal real quick. Now let's actually install it. To do that, we'll do npm install nan, actually let's do dash g, so this is global. And we are gonna use the beta branch or at next, which is what they call it. So let's hit enter, in which we can see in some of these warnings, it is in fact pulling the version two there. So this may take a minute. We're just gonna give it some time to install. And there we go, it is done. So just to check the version, we could do a NAN version, just like that. And you can see we are on, in fact, the latest beta version. And to actually start NAN, all we need to do is do NAN start, and then it's going to fire up. But it's gonna run in a similar fashion to running like a Docker container without it in detached mode. So it still works in all that. So if we actually head over here, we can copy this and drop it into our web browser. Of course, changing localhost to the actual IP address of the server. So 176, enter, and there we go. It's working, even though it's really not working yet. So to fix this, we're actually gonna to want to change some environmental variables and maybe even set up a reverse proxy if we really wanna do this right. So what I'm gonna do is actually go over here to the terminal. I'm gonna do control C to go ahead and stop it. So you can see here, it's now gonna be offline. And what we're gonna be using is a tool called PM2. This will help us keep NAN running in the background, automatically restart when it crashes. We can have it start NAN when the system boots up. And it's a really easy way to actually manage these environmental variables. If I type PM2, we can see it is not found. So we can install it the same way we did with NAN, which is just a MPM install globally PM2. Just like that, hit enter. Much smaller tools should be pretty quick. There we go, and we can see now it is installed. So what we're gonna to want to do is create a configuration file for NAN. It's gonna to need to be a JavaScript file, and I'm just gonna put mine right into my home directory called NAN config JavaScript. And then I have this little block of code here I'm gonna paste in and we're gonna change some things. So this is gonna be our NAN instance. For the release type, I'm gonna switch this over to next since we are running the beta version. For the host, I'm gonna keep that so it's exposed so I can access it on my local network here. And then right here we have a webhook URL which we can use with whatever reverse proxy we have, whether if it's running local domains or external domains. So for this just test, I'm just gonna call this NAN2 at a domain that I have for local purposes. And then real quick, just so this actually works, let's go ahead and travel to my proxy, which is Nginx Proxy Manager. So I'm gonna just do nan2.hopkey.net and we are going to forward the IP address for it at its port, which is 5678, 5678. Of course, we're gonna want WebSocket, Common Exploits, and then give it our certificate with SSL and HTTP2 support. And I don't believe there's anything we need to put in advanced configuration. I don't have anything on my actual instance, but in the notes down below, I'll add some additional information if there's something there. So let's hit save, then we'll back out of there and that should be ready to go. So what we're gonna do is save this JavaScript file or this JavaScript configuration file here, exit out, and now we're gonna start it with PM2. So do PM2 start, and we're gonna point it to that JavaScript file, which is just NAN config JS, hit enter, and then it's gonna go ahead and spin up NAN with those environmental variables that I inputted. If I refresh this, you can see we get the same error here, but if I go to nan2.hopkey.net, well, yeah, look at that. We now are in NAN in their preferred state with SSL. So just go ahead and fill that out, click on next, and then we are going to be in. I do recommend you go ahead and grab your free license key, but I'm gonna skip that for now. And you can see we're in, we're in version two, and we have that new publish button there, which again is one of the key actual visual differences that you're gonna notice. Now, one thing, a little tidbit, if you want NAN to automatically start up when your machine starts up, so like on a reboot, for example, if we just type in PM2, save just like that what it's going to do is use the current process list to create a file that it can reference with the processes and you can use pm2 with basically just managing anything with npm so you could stop it delete it restart nan you can view a list just like this of those services running if you use monit you can actually do a live monitoring of the processes and everything running super cool stuff so that is installing nan with npm also, all the updates with version two, there'll be a bunch of information down below 
And if you're interested in checking out some of the, or an example of a workflow that you can use directly with Netbird to connect and monitor offsite instances, servers, applications, whatever it may be, we'll post our original NAN video on screen now. So with all that, I do hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe so you don't miss our future videos. Have a great day and goodbye.